Hey, good evening, folks. <laughs> surprise. Uh, welcome to 635. And surprise, I'm here with you tonight. Um, I'm so glad to be able to spend this time with you. And I'm also glad that it means that Marissa is enjoying some time away this week. Uh, and we are grateful for time for rest and renewal and refreshing with her boys and so um, grateful to come in and be with you for worship and grateful to have Sylvia Roberts here tonight as our preacher for the evening. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, yeah, we can celebrate that for sure. Um, Sylvia is here with Dalton uh, to whom she just got married. Yeah. Yeah, and they are a very short time from leaving for the Washington, D.C. area, uh, where Sylvia will be attending Wesley Theological Seminary as she is on the path uh, toward ordination in the United Methodist Church. So we're excited for you, excited for both of you in your new married life. Um, and glad that you're here to have the opportunity to preach and for this group to receive that blessing. So thanks for being here, Sylvia. Sylvia's, I, are you usually here at this service? Okay, so, um, so Sylvia's been a part of Trinity for a while now since she came up to Gainesville to attend school at the University of Florida. And we have been so grateful for her presence as a part of the church and a part of our adult choir and a part of our worship band. Um, and uh, so it's wonderful to now be able to um, hear a word from her tonight and send her off to this new adventure. So yeah, so exciting times. Yeah, yeah. You missed it, I already said. <laughs> Catherine back there trying to, <laughs> try, trying to tell me what to say. You're not a pastor here anymore. So. <laughs> but she is my DS, so I guess I should behave. So, uh, so let me <laughs> let me encourage you <laughs> to uh, let us know that you've worshipped with us tonight. Um, there are connect cards in your bulletin, and uh, if you've got a particular prayer concern. Um, you can share that, and when we come forward for communion, you can bring those Connect cards as well as any offerings that you're making tonight forward and place them in the offering plate. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things I really value is the time each week when I see that list of prayer concerns from the congregation and I have an opportunity to, to be in prayer for you. So uh, just know that uh, as your pastors, we, we care about those things and we care about you and the things that are going on in your lives that we have the opportunity to, to lift up on your behalf. So, so um, let me invite you to take just a moment and stand up and say good evening to someone close to you as we get ready to worship. Strangely dim 
seated and as we uh, step into a time of prayer together I wonder if there are any celebrations any concerns um, anything that you would like to lift up for us to be remembering together yeah Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Judy, whose twin sister just passed away yesterday, and Flo, who's going to see a neurologist. Boy, I can't imagine having a twin, and then, boy, that's just, yeah, that would be really hard, really hard. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Alan. Let's pray for, we have our 29 week ultrasound. All right. Absolutely, yeah. Praying for that for sure. And those babies, awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay, from Chase, all right. Okay, excellent, let me know when that one's ready. Um, while Chase is typing his, does anybody else have uh, any other prayer requests? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, helping both sides talk to each other. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You ready, Chase? Not yet? Okay, okay. Well, I will just say, um, uh, prayers, you know, we, we are, and, and Mildred, yours um, points out the fact that while it's summer, it's, we're getting really close to the beginning of school, which is hard to believe. Um, but already, just knowing that, uh, you know, that folks are preparing for that, and our preschool team here is, and our leaders in that are getting ready for another year here on campus at Trinity, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming. We ready? All right. Um, yeah, Chase, uh, just pray for him and the situation with their house being remodeled and everything being kind of upside down in his life. And then um, also, and that he might be able to get away for a few weeks before fall. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So prayers for Chase and for lots of um, lots of changes in the in the present moment in his household and uh, just the ability to see a good way through all of that. Yeah. Well, let's pray together, and uh, I'm going to invite you into a moment of silence when you can offer prayers that may be on your heart, and then I'll offer one for us together, and, uh, and then invite you into the Lord's Prayer with me at the end. Let's pray. Loving God, we offer thanks and praise for your faithfulness and for your presence in our lives, for um, your readiness to hear and receive our requests. And we know, O God, as the scriptures teach us, that in all things you are always at work for our good. Sometimes life uh, brings new surprises of joy and celebration, and sometimes it brings unwanted surprises of hardship and challenge and even suffering. And in it all, you are with us. You are for us. So help us to uh, see your goodness at work in our lives, especially at those times when it may be hard to see. Help us to hold on to the truth of your love for us. And in your son, Jesus Christ, may we always find hope because in his life and his death and his resurrection, you have made a way for all your children We pray tonight together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
okay, I did turn it on correctly. You're ready. That's a good start. <laughs> there we go. There you go. All you, Sylvia. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Well, let's just jump straight into a prayer tonight. Um, and I ask that you guys pray for me um, as I pray out loud for all of us. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you use me as your vessel, that it is your words that flow through me, and it is your words that we hear. your name I pray. Amen. All right, well, good evening, friends. I am back again. It is great to be here, gathered with you all tonight. Um, it was about a month and a half ago that I last stood in front of all of you guys and spoke about uh, change in our lives. I cannot express to you just how wonderful that moment was for me, coming back to preach for the first time in over six years. Um, it was so wonderful, in fact, that when I was speaking with Marissa a few weeks ago and she asked if I'd want to do it again, I immediately said yes without um, realizing that I might have overbooked myself a little bit. Um, yeah, life's been a bit busy for me lately. So busy that, as Pastor Steve previously mentioned, I feel that I have to reintroduce myself to you all. Hi, my name is Sylvia Dial, and this is my husband, Dalton Dial. As of four days ago, I became a wife. So you can all imagine just how crazy my life has been the last few weeks. Between planning an elopement and a celebration in just two weeks' time, to working full-time, taking my licensing coursework to teach in West Virginia once I move, preparing for a cross-state uh, move itself, and finalizing all of the paperwork for grad school, I have been capital B busy lately. Despite all that, I made a commitment to be here and committed to you guys tonight. So, last night, I sat down and I put pen to paper, or in my case, I put fingers to keyboard, and I started working on this sermon for you all. Um, that being said, don't be surprised if tonight's sermon is a little bit shorter than last time. Um, but I hope you all give me a bit of grace with that, all things considered. <laughs> Tonight, I will be reading and focusing on scripture from Luke chapter 10, starting in the 38th verse. That is Luke 10, verse 38, for any of you who are able to follow along, since I got the scripture out too late to be printed in the bulletin. <laughs> all right, let's read together. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. About a week ago, I was pondering what in the world would I preach on tonight. Last time, there was an obvious topic on my mind. This time, I was throwing my head around in circles trying to figure out what my sermon would be on. I figured the idea would come to me when God intended it to. I waited not so patiently for God's still, soft voice. Can you guess where it finally hit me? It was in the shower after my morning workout before starting my full day's work. And I, I won't go into many more details, but that is a place of peace and quiet for me. And that's where the topic hit me. Mary and Martha, two very important women in Jesus' life. We all are familiar with their names and their friendship with Christ. 
I remember hearing this story for the first time in elementary school while attending my Sunday school. I recall hearing the story and being offered the question, who would you be? Of course, everyone wants to be a Mary, to be the one being praised by Jesus himself and rewarded for their determination to be present with Christ. But let me tell you, even as a small child, I saw myself identifying with Martha. Before guests come over, you can guarantee to find me frantically running around my house cleaning every crevice, ensuring the house smells of cleaner and flowers and baked goods instead of the dogs that I cohabitate with, and dishing out orders to anyone around to prep for our visitors. I feel the need to ensure the best version of myself is presented, that my home is an outward representation of my orderly and put-together life. Poor Dalton has gotten all too familiar with this process, and thankfully, has adapted to my meticulous ways. I am a Martha through and through when it comes to this. I mean, I don't think she was entirely wrong for her actions. The holy and perfect Christ deserves to rest his feet on clean floors at the bare minimum. Or maybe, maybe that's the worldly expectation speaking to me. I am a busybody of a person you will be hard-pressed to find me at a time where I don't have at least a couple of things on my immediate to-do list. This constant craziness often leaves me struggling to fit everything in, much like writing and prepping for this sermon. But let me recap a conversation I had yesterday with a coworker that some of you guys might relate to, to give you a better picture. Hey, Sylvia, we're planning a dinner this week for a, a goodbye for a coworker. Would you be able to come on Wednesday? Oh, I can't, I'm, I'm preaching. Oh, well, how about Thursday? Can't, I have choir rehearsal. Oh, well, maybe tonight then? No, I gotta write that sermon I'm preaching on Wednesday. Oh, well, what about Thursday before your rehearsal? Can't do that either, I gotta get a vaccine booster for grad school. And the list goes on. Quite frankly, guys, I have been a bit overbooked lately. My wick is burning short, and I relish for a day that I have a bit of a break. I look onward to the next month or so, and I realize that I am in full go mode for the next six weeks at least. There are plenty of nights I get home from work and just want to take a break. I know this part will be hard to believe, but I even become irritable about how much I have to get done before I get to go to sleep for the night. My busyness makes me a worse person. But busyness is a sign of productivity, right? That's what our culture tells us. It tells us that we have to be constantly needed and have busy hands in order to hold a value. Did you hear what I just said? Our culture teaches us that our value is in our productivity, in our busyness, and in being needed by others. No wonder we get burnt out so easily and feel isolated all of the time. We know better. We know our value comes from our creator. So why do we let the standards of the world dictate our actions and our happiness? As a society, we are tired. We are pulled in a million directions at all times. And I don't know about y'all, but I am a worse person, less Christ-like, when I let myself get wrapped up in the unachievable expectations of the world. And it is not an uncommon thing for me to let happen. At work, I teach my clients to ask for breaks when they become overwhelmed by their environment, overwhelmed by a demand or by their emotions. For anyone who isn't aware, I work with children on the autism spectrum. Learning to ask for breaks when the world becomes too much for them instead of shutting down or lashing out is incredibly important for their future success. When was the last time we asked for a break? When was the last time we felt we could ask for a break? Or when was the last time we knew how to ask for a break? Well, luckily for us, there's a verse for that. 
Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29 say, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Taste, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come to me, find rest for your souls. Peach, peach. Peace in the stillness of Christ. When was the last time your soul rested? That phrase, your soul rested. I generally don't have an answer for that. I've been too busy toting the imaginary medal of importance on my chest for most things to do to reflect on the state of my soul. I complain about being worn out and tired and wanting a break. Meanwhile, God is screaming at me, come to me, come to me. My goodness, maybe someday I'll learn to listen. When will I learn to listen to that? Come to me, all who labor, all who are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. But my story is not everybody's story. Perhaps up to now, you have not been able to relate to me at all. Maybe you feel disconnected from what I've said because you would give anything to have your calendar filled up with events and responsibilities and people who needed you. Maybe your life feels too still still and quiet, but for some reason lacking peace. Remember the scripture I originally read from Luke? There's another person in that story, Mary. Mary found herself in a different position in life than Martha. Mary wasn't caught up in the million tasks Martha was completing around her. Mary was seated at Jesus' feet, listening while the world continued to spin around her. Mary was also going against her culture's expectations of her. Mary would have been expected to be helping Martha with the house chores and to have limited contact with Jesus alone since he was a male and not from her immediate family. But instead of falling into the standards that the world set for her, Mary placed herself directly in God's presence and locked into the words of Christ. Sounds like a perfect picture of a faithful follower of Christ, doesn't it? Who put her relationship with the Lord front and center, neglecting where the world was pulling her. But I want to take a moment to think of it a different way. We don't know how old Mary was, but it is safe to assume that she was in her teenage years, given that she was unwedded and living in her family home. We can also assume that Mary came from a family of at least decent means, since they often hosted Jesus and his disciples for dinners. A young, unmarried, semi-wealthy woman who did not need to work outside of her family home and was most likely kept closely to preserve her purity and her image. It seems to me Mary might have gotten a little bored by the same day-to-day activities and lack of responsibilities. Picture Mary, a young, energetic girl who was stuck at her home, maybe leaving weekly or a little more for religious services or women's gatherings, who only congregated with her immediate family in the majority of the time. Do some of you relate to that depiction of daily life a little more? Maybe you recently retired and didn't know what you were going to do with your free time. Maybe you had a health change and are not able to keep up with your previous workload. Maybe you lost a friend or a loved one and all of a sudden you feel lost and alone and unsure what to do next. Maybe the stillness in your life is anything but peaceful. Maybe all you want is a new opportunity. Jesus coming to Mary's house was an event for her. She was glued in 1,000%, seated right at Jesus' feet, 
intensely taking in everything Jesus said, perhaps because this was the first novel conversation with someone other than her parents that she's had in weeks. The scripture says that Mary chose to sit with Christ in his stillness while the house was a whirlwind around her. Mary may not have had a choice in her circumstances, but she made the choice to be present with the Lord. We don't always know what God has in store for us. We don't know why he took us on the long way around instead of taking the interstate to our perceived destination. We don't know why we sometimes feel stuck in our seasons of extreme busyness or extreme lack thereof. But there is obviously value in the place we currently inhabit, even when the value is less obvious to figure out. In those hard seasons of waiting, wanting, and longing for more, God reminds us of the value of stillness. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15 says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. It is in these times of quietness, these times of stillness and rest, that we gain our strength. Whether it is trusting God when he places us in these times of rest, as we're kicking and screaming for more to do, or in prioritizing time with God while we struggle to make it through another 18-hour day of constant responsibilities and nonstop workload, God desperately wants us to give, desperate, desperately wants to give us his peace in stillness. Be it an abundance of stillness that feels anything but holy, or barely squeezed in five minutes before bed at the end of the day. God is yelling at us, peace, be still. Just like he did to the raging storms in the seas, the seas of Galilee. And if then, all those many years ago, even the wind and the waves obeyed him, shouldn't we? Let's take a moment to be still and pray together. I'm gonna give us a moment of silence where we can just listen and sit. And then I'll close this out in prayer. Bow your heads with me. Lord, it is not every day that we get to gather in a still, holy environment like this one. In a place where we can truly set aside the world around us and our struggles and tune into you. Lord, I pray that through the deafening silence or through the raging storms in our lives that we can hear your whisper to us, that you can bring us into your peace and your stillness, your holy stillness and rest so that you may fill us up, Lord, and we can be more Christ-like, more like you, that we can hear where you are guiding us Lord, open our ears and our hearts to you and to your love. Guide us and provide us with that peace that surpasses all understanding. In your name we pray. Amen. Every time I come to this table in this space, there is a reminder to me that perhaps you've seen before as well. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. 
And Jesus invites us to a table where we can just be. We don't have to do. We are invited to be fully present before God and to receive from God the free gift of God's love and God's grace. And through the tangible gifts of a piece of bread and a taste of juice, to be reminded of God's provision for us as God's children. We remember how on the night before Jesus died, when he was sharing a meal with his friends, his closest friends, the disciples, for a final time. He took bread that night and he broke it. He shared it with them and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took a cup and he gave thanks, shared it with him and said, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, we give thanks and praise for this table where you set a place for each of us to come and receive. We pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all who come to receive these gifts and on the gifts themselves, so that in the bread and the cup, we would receive and recognize the presence of Christ, the gift of his life, his body and blood given up for our sake and for the sake of the world. And that in these moments of nourishment, we would find ourselves more deeply connected with you, with one another, and with the community and the world that you call us to love and to serve. So bind us together in these moments. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, In just a moment, we'll invite you to come forward and receive uh, these gifts. Uh, Just come as you are ready, and we'll offer you a piece of bread. Um, And then after receiving the bread, you can take a cup from the tray. Uh, Those empty cups, when you're done, can be placed in the basket that you see here on the table in front. Here in Trinity and in the United Methodist Church, the table of communion is always open to everyone. And so each of you are welcome to come and participate in this time. I'm going to invite Sylvia to come and join me in offering the elements to you today, tonight. Everything is ready, and we welcome you to the table. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, We'll sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above the all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name. Sing the song. 
song forever and amen. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy forever. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above the all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above the all. And the angels cry, Holy. I'm so glad you all decided to be here tonight, and I'm especially thankful to Sylvia Dial <laughs> for bringing the word tonight, and um, I'm going to, you know what, uh, your last day is, you, you guys, what's that, is this Sunday? Oh, the fourth, okay, 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 but this is likely your last time in this space with us. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are grateful for you and grateful for your message tonight and for the calling that God has put on your life and look forward to being in prayer for you and having you back to visit and tell us all the wonderful things that God is doing in your life as you, as you go through this process and for you too, Dalton, and uh, look forward to you all's journey together. Let me invite you to stand and receive a blessing as you go out uh, from this place this evening. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Go in peace, friends.